Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Kershaw Tactical Pack that includes the Kershaw Brawler. So stay tuned. Quite a few folks have requested a review of this lately. They, um, Walmart has a lot of these combo packs and besides the Kershaw, they had the SOG, which uh, I had already reviewed a couple of weeks ago. And also there's a couple of Gerber. Now one of the Gerber is um, a, a package that includes the Traverse. And if uh, you followed me way back a couple of years ago, I sort of voted that the worst knife ever <laughs> so i would not recommend the traverse i think the other one is a package with the rip stop not a big fan of it i probably if i did recommend it would be like very borderline so um however kershaw usually on their lower end stuff they still make a really good knife so i have some pretty high expectations for this so let's open this up and take a closer look so here's the packaging typical holiday season kind of end cap packaging that you see here and there's three things you get a tactical pen the knife a flashlight and if you notice here it says that it has speed safe which is Kershaw's branded um, assisted opening technology it's a flipper which we'll we'll show off here it's quad carry which means that the clip can be mounted at all four points so it's left to right carry blade or, or tip up or tip down and it is a liner lock on the back they uh, again show those same things they have some specs here they say the weight is 1.8 ounces which is actually fa false they actually um, messed up on the specs here really interesting and down here of course made in China how are you gonna get it so cheap so let's go ahead and open this up and start taking a real close look Keep in mind this is a limited edition, so you better get it before they're gone. <laughs> Again, these, these are always out for the holidays. So anyway, one thing that um, I'm going to sort of throw out here on my channel as a recommendation to folks who do reviews of products such as these. T to me personally, it's kind of boring watching somebody try to cut these things open on camera and waste a minute or two. Um, I have started not doing that anymore, if you've noticed. I, um, besides watching people almost cut their fingers off trying to get the stuff out of these things, uh, you know, tell me how you feel about that, and then maybe other YouTubers who watch my channel will see whether or not you folks really want to watch people open the clamshell packaging up. To me, it seems a little ridiculous to do that on camera. So here's a little extras that you get. I want to put these aside and focus on the the main part of the package. They put these little protectors on there. I think Gerber was the first to do this. Anyway, here it is. So let's get a uh, first impression. Um, feels slightly small. You can see I have medium to large hands, and it's my hand is basically covering that whole handle. So uh, initial response here is it's a little small. My, my thumb wants to come up a little bit more than where it's sort of engineered. You can see uh, my I would prefer the thumb wrap further up. It's all because this hand is a little bit small. So if you have small to uh, medium hands, this is probably perfect for very large hands. It's really pushing it. But it's not bad. I mean, it's not like it's totally uncomfortable. So let's go ahead and start going down the specifics. If I had to classify this, I would classify it as a medium assisted opening folder. And its purpose in life would be a defensive tactical knife and or a EDC. For the specifications, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at it closed. Closed, it is four and an eighth inch long blade length. Well, let's go ahead and open this up. And as you can see, it's that speed safe assisted opening. The blade is three inches and the overall length is seven and one eighth inch. The weight is 3.9 ounces. The deployment 
as you can see, see this little notch right there? You know my lighting really sucks these days. Let's see if I can fix that. You see this little notch right there? Well, besides being a good hand guard there to keep your hand from slipping on the blade, when you fold this, it comes up and it's uh, <laughs> it's sticking up over here. So that makes it a flipper, see? And it's that assisted opening. So that's how you deploy this knife. Now, you can also deploy it using the thumb studs. Now, the thumb studs, there is a reasonable amount of room between the scales and the thumb stud. And, uh, but it, there could be more. They could have maybe filed this down a little bit, made some sort of place where your thumb could really get behind that thumb stud. But it's a typical um, pyramid style thumb stud. I gotta do something about my lighting. <laughs> I, I am sorry, folks. Let's see. Uh, all right, now you get some harsh shadows, but you can see it's a a pyramid style thumb stud right there. And uh, your finger can get behind there. It's ambidextrous, so either side, either hand, you can deploy it rather quickly. The blade type. Well, what you have here is a plain edge hollow ground modified tonneau blade. There's a mouthful. And I say it's modified because this is uh, slightly rounded and it's uh, slightly more forward than your typical. Sort of like a kind of a drop point here on top. So it's, you know, I mean if they had smoothed this out any further, th this would have been a drop point. It's, it's sort of like halfway between a drop point and a tonneau. So good. Um, all-purpose design but what this really does is help strengthen the tip over maybe a plain drop point so really good all-purpose kind of blade the only downside to this would be just a little difficulty maybe uh, sharpening the the rounded part of the edge here because you you know going forward here but it's still curved it, it would be kind of an interesting job to sharpen the coating on here is a black oxide coating that helps uh, protect the blade and the steel itself is 8CR13MOV stainless steel, which is a Chinese steel. Um, the U.S. equivalent would be the 440B. The Japanese equivalent would be sort of the OS 8A. On the Rockwell hardness scale, it's about a 58 to 59. So it could be a little brittle. You know, I wouldn't do like jobs like try to, to put this in here and turn screws or anything like that. You'll probably chip it or break it. Now I did point out that this is a liner lock and you can see it does have steel liners. The steel liners are um, covered up by these really nice scales. These scales are GRN which is glass filled nylon. Now you can see we have a very small clip here but it's very tight. Might be kind of hard to put on you know thick jeans so um, just be aware of that. But you can mount this clip here, here here or here, which means left or right, tip up, tip down. And everybody should be happy with that. Uh, let me see. I think I really covered everything as far as this goes. Again, it's made in China. And the price for this and these two extras here is a measly $20. So, so far it's feeling really good. So, let's go ahead and start putting it through some tests. The first thing I usually like to check is blade centering. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And you can see that the centering is right on. You couldn't ask for anything better than that. Really good blade centering. Um, next thing is blade retention. And it's not flying out by itself. And it really, here's how far you got to pull this out before it starts to deploy. Right about there. <laughs> I almost cut my hand there. So pretty good blade retention, shouldn't be any problems opening up in your pocket. Um, lock up is really good. It's uh, no play side to side or up and down. The liner lock is where you want it to be when it comes out of the package. It's not like all the way over like a worn blade. It's at the beginning but squarely behind the, the uh, back of the blade or the tang of the blade or whatever you want to call it, the shoulder of the blade. I don't know, they're so sure there's a technical term. But that's exactly where you want it to be. Solid lockup with room to wear. 
again we already checked blade play next thing is where I do my my wood stabbing test this is where I get a lot of people commenting that oh my god you could have lost your hand and all that good stuff so but you know what it's what I do to make sure you're getting a good blade here so um, I'm gonna go ahead and stab into here and basically what I'm doing is testing the point to make sure it doesn't easily break and give it a really good one you can see there and let's go ahead and take a look at that point and I can see that it is perfectly fine stood up to it I don't even think any of the coating came off so very good good strong blade testament to the HCR 13 MOV made in China and last is um, ergonomics again feels a little small in my hand but still no problem I don't feel like it's gonna um, slip or anything let's look, feel reverse grip actually reverse grip is very comfortable and the reason why is because you see how that shape is right there that allows your your thumb to just comfortably fold over the top so very good even this way this is the way I usually hold knives when I'm doing like fine work and everything dainty you know <laughs> so very comfortable blade by the way the model number of this is 1900 you can see there written on the blade on this side you see Kershaw last thing is the paper cut test so I go ahead and sacrifice my notes here to see how sharp it comes and it smoothly cuts through like butter so very happy with that it's very sharp most Kershaw's are very very sharp out of the package so couldn't be happier with it stop looking at my notes so pros for this knife is it's like getting a free knife and flashlight with I mean a free pen and flashlight with your knife and um, you know all this for twenty dollars is pretty pretty good the cons is yeah it's made in China it has this very small very tight clip that some people might not be happy with and uh, if, if you call this a down side the uh, specs that are written on the back of this package as far as weight is incorrect and even the blade length that they added an extra eighth inch uh, um, the specs for some reason are a little off alright so let's go ahead and put this aside you know I should have mentioned the jimping here the jimping is you know if you have, if you have small hands it's it and you do use it it actually is pretty perfect jimping um, if you can see right there a little bit on top of the handle a little bit here on top of the blade and you have some back here this is more um, no actually it, it, it works a little bit but uh, this stuff here is pretty good so let's take a look at what we got here now um, I need something to write on so let's go ahead and put this here let's take a look at this pen First off, it's uh, very smooth, very nice, and does it write well? <laughs> yes, it does. It writes very well, and I'm not an artist. Wow, that's very, very nice. Now, um, feels like it's made out of aircraft aluminum. It has a lot of knurling on there. Let me take all these distractions away. You can see all that knurling it has on there. Nice, uh, nice clip. The clip does not rest squarely on. Hear that? On the pen, there's like a little space. It looks like like if if you were had bent it out. So, um, but it's a very beefy one. I wonder if I can. Oh, you know what? I can fix that. You can take the glass breaker off here. Take this off. I'll. Uh, just bend this a little bit down and then put this back on here and now it's going to rest firmly on the pen and there we go all fixed look at that <laughs> so you know if you bend this out and everything all you do is take the little glass breaker off here unscrew it and uh, adjust it and then it'll work fine so this is a defensive tool, so you can use this, 
you know, this is like everyday carry. This is a great EDC because if you had to take notes in case of an accident or an event or whatever, you got your pen, but your pen doubles as a defensive tool that you use for stabbing, or if you're into the martial arts, you could do all that fancy pressure points and all that good stuff. I'm not an instructor or someone skilled enough to be teaching anybody how to do that stuff here, so I will refrain from doing that. So we'll set that aside. Now, let's take a look at the flashlight you get. This is, you know, probably a two or three dollar flashlight, but it is, it is aluminum. It has some a fine knurling right here, right here. You get um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine LEDs in there. And um, you're supposed to come with some batteries. So let's go ahead and take a look. Where, oh, okay, see they put this plastic on there so we'll go ahead and put that back they give you some alkaline battery no they don't they give you some super duty raymax batteries made in china not alkaline batteries and go ahead it feels kind of cheap and uh it's, it's adequately bright let's uh let's compare it this is about 60 to 70 lumen right here so I want to sort of compare how it looks compared. So let me turn this on, turn this on, and you can see the difference between a 70, 65, I think 65 70 lumen and this guy. So this is, you know, not too bright, probably about 20, 20, 30 lumen at the very most. And of course, you know, this is not regulated. So as it, as the batteries die, and they'll die fast with the batteries that they gave you, it'll, um, it'll start dimming. Still, it's good. You can throw this in your car if you don't have a flashlight in your car. Always good to have one or, you know, leave it at work so you have one there. You know, whatever. I wouldn't use this as my primary flashlight to depend on, but it's a good junker, beater, whatever you want to call it. So there you go. The Kershaw Tactical Pack that includes the Kershaw Brawler. So because of the price and what you get, I really recommend this. I give it a strong 9 out of 10. I mean, it's uh, really, really good. And that thing just comes out with authority. Um, great gift idea if you're, you know, strapped for money. Great for maybe gift exchange at work or, or where you do the white horse thing or, or whatever. Th this would be a, a great idea. By the way, I didn't say anything about the texturing, but... Um, it's adequate. <laughs> it's nothing fancy, but there's there's a, a close look at it. I'll let you take a look at both sides. I didn't do the close up. I was trying to rush because uh, I was running. This this video is running a lot longer than I want it to. Got my fingerprints all over it already. So thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession Channel. I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and you. And I hope you have a great evening. Take care.